Welcome back to DXB Today, where tonight we are talking impact investment. And who better to join us in this discussion than a senior partner of the region's leading venture capital firm. Please join me in welcoming C3 founder and senior partner of Global Ventures, Medea Nocentini. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Very so, exciting. As an introduction, what sort of things do you do on your day to day when it comes to venture capital? So for sure, we screen a lot of companies, about 50 a week. So it's a, a lot of innovative, incredible change makers that we meet on a regular basis. And then, of course, we help the ones that we have already invested in. We have more than 60 now across three funds. And also, we run accelerator programs. This is on the C3 side. And so we meet all the new generations of incredible entrepreneurs from the region. We typically focus on Middle East and Africa, but also sometimes we look at other countries such as Pakistan, Turkey, and other emerging markets. Medea, uh, you know, you guys do incredible work at C3 when it comes to impact investment with entrepreneurs. You kind of help them from A all the way to Z. You even find them investors, you know, all the way through. I'm interested to know, as an entrepreneur, why would it be beneficial to them commercially to go down the impact road and actually, you know, not just do it as a, as a box tick, you know, everyone likes to do that, but why is it deeply important for the foundation of their company to have, to have a focus on impact? Uh, I'll, I'll split the answer in two. Mm -hmm. There are the companies that are not intentional about impacts. We do believe they should at least consider what we call ESG, uh, um, risk assessment, risk mitigation, so they, they make sure they don't do harm. Doing harm, in particular in a social media uh, and very well connected uh, environment globally, it's a huge risk. One mistake uh, on many different things like child labor, not checking how old your drivers are, anything as such can ruin in a second an incredible company. Then there are the founders that are intentional about the impact. And what I like, it's when they see a huge global challenge as an incredible business opportunity. So they don't see a challenge, they see a business opportunity. While they are making money, they're also making a change in the world. Mm, I love that. Um, so I want to ask, can you tell us any um, success stories of uh, impact investment that have been made by uh, your companies? So Global Ventures invest in commercial entities, mm -hmm. mission driven. So we love those companies, those founders that really believe in what they're doing. We have a few examples I could go on and on forever. <laughs> I'll pick a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a company called Proximy, which is basically a healthcare uh, company that has softwares that can work at a very low level of bandwidth that allow for surgeries to happen with different doctors in different parts of the world. And it was founded by a doctor from Lebanon, Dr. Nadine. So it's really an incredible, incredible solution. And now they are in tens of countries around the world, not only in emerging markets. And then we have another one, which is Red Sea Farms, and now rebranding as Iris. They can grow vegetables in the desert with salty water and just the power of light. They patented a series of technologies, which is just incredible to see, with same yields, same nutritionals. They started from Saudi, and now they're expanding in the US as well. So, and I could go on and on, I'll probably <laughs> okay. stop here. Matthew, if I can ask, I know Global Ventures have been doing fantastically well, and you can see how it's transitioning the impact investment in the UAE and within the region as well. What else do you think we require to permeate the awareness and further build the ecosystem? Surely we need to prove as we're doing as we speak that investing in impact solutions, it's not compromising business returns. It doesn't compromise in impact uh, on one side, but it doesn't compromise any business returns. The investors will get as much money as they will do if they invest in commercially, pure commercial uh, solutions. That's something where I believe we'll need another five to 10 years to have enough companies that have returned enough money with an impact at the core of their strategy. And I, I'm very positive. We see that happening. It's not long 
uh, it's not a long wait for sure. And then uh, probably we need to help more the entrepreneurs to learn how to measure their impact without spending too much time, too much money, so that they can prove that not only they're growing as a business, but they're also having a positive impact, which is the most difficult thing. There are not a lot of global frameworks yet that are widely accepted, accepted and acceptable. Um, a little bit more research will be helpful to have some benchmarks. But I would say it's coming. Uh, I've been doing uh, this kind of work for the past 12 years and in the last decade I've seen incredible change, in particular in the region. I'm very excited about how the UAE is leading this agenda. Um, we'll go fast and we'll do well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Medea, one thing that I'm quite, um, you know, just a bit sure about is that we haven't been educated very much on this matter. But how do we spread that education? Because it is education at the end of the day. We need to make sure everyone's informed on this subject to even consider, you know, being a part of the movement. So how do we educate the nation more? How do we spread the word? I think um, at the university level, we can do more. We have started working with some universities here in the UAE, but I do believe the new generations of engineers, of business uh, students and so forth, they are ready to get that level of knowledge and then implement it not only in the startup world, but also in the corporate that eventually they will, uh, they will join later. And so, for example, we had the program with Engie, which is a renewable huge conglomerate from France, also based here in the UAE, that involved engineers from all faculties in the UAE that actually could join Angie on this incredible program. It was an internship program, but it was geared towards COP and finding solutions for the huge challenges that we face as humanity. It was really incredible. I think we learned more than the students <laughs> during the process. It was fascinating. So definitely uh, working more with students and the new generation of leaders, but also I would say just involve the community more into what we do and what we see every day, because it's just getting in touch with those entrepreneurs and the solutions they bring to the world, their community, the impact on their community, that you see with your own eyes how incredible all of this is. Thank you so much, Nadia, for educating us three further on the matter. Thank you. Now today's spotlight is on a life coach who works with our equestrian friends to build confidence, empathy and leadership in the future leaders and CEOs. This is Monica Kubik from FieldQuest. Hello, my name is Monica and I'm the founder of FieldQuest. FieldQuest stands for a quest, a journey where we explore your feelings, but also use the equestrian, the horses, to help us with that. I coach people with the help of horses. I coach both corporates and also individuals to find answers. So initially I started the journey offering corporate leadership trainings, helping leaders work on their assertiveness, on their confidence. And after the years, yeah, found out that I can also help people on a very personal level, deal with anxieties, deal with depressions, and yeah, that assertiveness, that self-confidence, and we do that in the field together with the horses. To be honest, uh, my whole setting up of the business has been one milestone after the other. I started off with a dream, with an idea, when I first heard about this new unique coaching type of business. But then after I did the first certification and came to Dubai, that job didn't exist. I had to create my own job basically. So, and yeah, over the last seven years, I've come quite far, starting off all alone. Now I'm also mentoring others to start on the same business and start with the same dream. And uh, yeah, very proud of where we have come so far, raising more awareness of how horses can help humans. My vision is definitely to have our own center where me and my colleagues can help more people and also more people in need. And at the same time, we're helping the horses. There are a lot of horses in this country that once they finished with their career, they are no longer of use. 
and we want to show that we can use these horses and repurpose them. Dubai to me means a place of possibilities, but also for myself, having been born and raised as an expert child, it also means a place where I fit in, where I belong. I have a German passport, but never really felt that I fitted in in Germany. And I've been living here now since 18 years. And doing business here really gives you this place where you know everything is possible. Monica, we love you doing amazing work and we love that you're talking about it on DXB today. But for right now, it's time for the roundup. Nimi, what have you got for us? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Microsoft has reportedly invested $1.5 billion in Abu Dhabi's artificial intelligence and cloud company G42, which will be strengthening the UAE's position by providing access to advanced generative AI capabilities. It has expanded partnerships all over the world, which has created $1 billion fund to support developers aimed at enhancing the Middle East's technology talent pool. There is so much funding towards AI, the government are on top of it. And what do we think about that, Meher? What do we think about that impact and that movement right here in the UAE? Very critical. And I think they also announced another one in Indonesia just last week as well. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, for us really to do any impact investment and to circle economy, we have to rely a lot on technology because the, of the advent of AI being there, I just came from a panel talking about exactly the same thing. AI will actually accelerate the development, anything we want to do with circular economy, whether it's a renewable energies, just think of it. It's just a mind boggling how things are happening. I think in the coming five years, things will develop much faster than what we see in the last 10 years. And as we move forward, it's gonna be even much, much, much faster. Speaking of that development, the world is uh, moving at a much faster pace than we used to, and it is because of artificial intelligence. Our capabilities are being enhanced. Obviously, humans always do need to be part of the equation. So the trio of people, AI, impact investment, how do we get the kids involved in this? That's why we need to go back to schools. One of the things Ministry of Education done last year, they've done a run out a pilot program where they've actually taught 3,000 teachers. Once this is successful, they're gonna make sure all the teachers are aware of this whole program and they'll be also taught. Now, we've got good books which talks about, you know, environment, how you save water and energy, but honestly, it, it lacks the framework. How do you really make it impactful? Why are we doing today? And that's very important. We do a lot of things, but we don't know why we're doing it. And I think that's where the curriculum needs to be changed and addressed. And remember, imagine this is gonna be across all the public schools, which is the largest bit over here. So that is one of the things that we're working on. Wow. Incredible. Well, I think the next generation are definitely going to be more educated on the matter than us <laughs> and definitely doing incredible stuff with it as well. So next up, we find out why investing in impactful startups can help you generate positive returns with a serial investor. Plus, we've got music set to keep you moving, so stay with us.